Hi there, everybody. It's Dr. David Heber, Chairman of the Herbalife Nutrition Institute, and very happy to be with you today to give you some special in-depth training on protein and immunity. Now, the slide that you see up right now is all my background of more than 40 years involved in nutrition, founding the nutrition program at UCLA, doing all kinds of work throughout the country through the American Society for Nutrition around the world. But I have to tell you, my number one honor of all of those is working with each one of you at Herbalife to change people's nutritional habits one person at a time. And today I've got a little story I wanna tell you that has to do with the idea that you might be trapped on a desert island because you've been shipwrecked. And as the ship was crashing into the island, what happened is that three chests of food fell off the ship. One chest had cassava fruit in it, which you may not know is 100% carbohydrate. Another chest was full of delicious extra virgin olive oil, which is 100% fat. And the third chest had in it soy protein isolate powder, which is 100% protein. So, if you're on this desert island, you're gonna to wave to try to get attention of some ships that might be coming by, but what are you gonna to eat to keep you strong and healthy while you wait to be rescued? Which one of these three chests are you gonna open? Well, how about the cassava fruit? You know, cassava fruit's 100% carbohydrate, and if you ate the cassava fruit, which contains no protein, your body would have no choice. It would have to take protein from your muscles and your organs to create the energy your body needs and to fulfill the protein needs of the body every day. And when it breaks it down, it breaks it down into amino acids. And I want you to remember that word amino acids, because that's something we're going to come back to later. So what about the olive oil? You know, we all love extra virgin olive oil, but if you just drank the olive oil, which is 100% fat, you'd also lose muscle and become weak. And that's because fat doesn't have any amino acids either. It can't build any protein in your body. It can't maintain your immune function. And what about that third chest? It's got the soy protein in it. Well, now you're asking yourself, what about that? Well, believe it or not, only the soy protein powder has what you need to build and maintain your muscle and immune system. So what should you do? Well, if you balance all three every day, that is have some of the soy protein, have some of the olive oil and some of the cassava fruit, you can go for a long period of time. Matter of fact, all foods have protein, fats and carbohydrates in them. The extra calories from a small amount of cassava fruit and a small amount of olive oil can help to balance the amino acids you're getting from the protein. But the protein is the primary source that's going to keep your body strong as you wait for a ship to pick you up. So all balanced nutrition that we always talk about along with healthy active lifestyle includes protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Now, what's important about protein? What differentiates it from carbohydrates and fat? And it's that protein is not stored in the body. It's handled very differently. Instead, it's recycled constantly, building up and breaking down. Fat and carbohydrate, on the other hand, are simply taken in, they're stored in the body. Sure, they're used for biochemical reactions, but there's no daily requirement for carbohydrate. And for fat, the daily requirement's so low, I haven't met anyone with a fat deficiency who had an intact gastrointestinal system since I've been practicing nutrition. So let's look at muscle, which is really critical. Muscle releases amino acids between meals and takes up amino acids after you eat, as shown on this slide. That means that when the amino acid level in the blood goes up, it enters the muscle. When the amino acid level is low in the blood, the muscle releases amino acids into the blood. So this dynamic thing is going on all day long, which is why you need meals with the right amount of protein all day long, every day of your life. So what does protein do besides muscle? Well, there are lots of other tissues around the body. The skin turns over every 10 to 30 days. Your uh, fat cells turn over, believe it or not, every eight years. That's probably not what you wanted to hear, but it takes a long time to turn over those fat cells. And your stomach cells and small intestinal cells turn over every couple of days. So you need to have essential amino acids in your body. What are essential amino acids? Well, there are amino acids your body cannot manufacture. There are 21 common amino acids. Of these, nine are essential. They're basically like vitamins. You have to eat them in your diet. 
and they include lysine, methionine, cysteine, tryptophan, valine, isoleucine, histidine, phenylalanine, and threonine. Now, I'm not going to quiz you on all those amino acids, but just know that there are nine of them, just like there are many vitamins and minerals you need every day. On the other hand, carbohydrates are different. Your body stores a very small amount of carbohydrate, and then the excess gets stored as fat. So most Americans eat about three times the amount of carbohydrate they need. There is no daily recommended amount of, of carbohydrate that you have to have as a requirement. Most people recommend around 130 grams per day. Most Americans eat about three times that amount. But what about exercise and protein? Well, it turns out that exercise maximizes protein synthesis by increasing the uptake of amino acids into the muscle. And how does that work? Well, you need to take in 20 grams or more of protein within 30 minutes to one hour after the end of your exercise. And as shown in this slide, both the protein dose and the timing is important. And it works a little better in younger people than older people, but that's particularly why as you get over age 30 or 40, you need to exercise more to maintain your muscle and get those amino acids in there after you finish exercise. The other important point I wanna bring up is that muscle breaks down while you sleep. Whenever you're sleeping, you're not eating. Now the body has a certain requirement for glucose for the brain and the red blood cell that it cannot get from body fat. So your muscle breaks down amino acids which are then converted into glucose and you break down a significant amount of muscle while you sleep. That's why breakfast is the most important meal of the day because you're breaking the fast and you're restoring the muscle amino acids that you lost while you were sleeping. Well, it turns out most people don't get enough protein at each meal. On this slide, there's a little blue band going across the slide, which is the maximum protein synthesis band. This is the level of protein you need to get to to get that positive protein synthesis going in your muscle. And what you can see on the slide is breakfast, there's just not enough. Lunch, there's still not enough. And most Americans eat way too much for dinner. But what happens to that extra 40% of protein that you don't use for your muscle? Well, it gets converted to carbohydrate and the carbohydrate gets converted to fat unless you break it down. And now let's take a look at the immune system. You know, the immune system is groups of cells all over the body. And one of the most important is found in your gastrointestinal tract. It's right underneath the villi, the little finger-like outcroppings we've always talked about where nutrients get absorbed. And those are covered in a turn by your microbiome, 14 trillion bacteria. Well, your immune system is constantly monitoring those bacteria in the microbiome. So this is one of the most important parts of your immune system. And it's maintained by daily protein, which maintains the protein structure of those intestinal cells that turn over every couple of days. So let's go back to our deserted island. It's gorgeous, but you're too weak to do anything because all you ate was the cassava fruit because it tasted so sweet. But you need all the nutrition, all the different nutrients. So what are you going to do? Well, you go back to our Herbalife Global Nutrition Philosophy that guides you to the right nutrition every single day. Now, you notice that there are lots of elements in this Global Nutrition Philosophy. There's 30% protein, up to 30% fat, emphasizing the omega-3 fats from ocean-caught fish and fish oil supplements. There's carbohydrates up to 40%, the good ones from fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. But I want to direct your attention to that bottom circle up to 30% protein because 30% protein is the most important part of our global nutrition philosophy. But how much protein do you need personally? Well, that depends on how much lean body mass is in your body. So what is lean body mass? We can break down your total body weight into fat mass and lean body mass or fat-free mass, which is protein rich. The lean body mass is made up of muscle, other organs, and bone. The lean body mass is the major determinant of your resting metabolic rate, the number of calories you burn at rest, which for most people is about 75% of the total calories burned per day. So we recommend that most of you get somewhere between 25 and 30% of total calories from protein because depending on how much you exercise. So you may change the amount of calories you burn per day by how much you exercise. So it'll get into a range of 25 to 30%. That's why we say up to 30% protein. Not only important how much protein you get personally, it's also important about the quality of that protein. What I mean by quality is the combination of amino acids found in that protein. 
As I told you, there are 21 common amino acids, but nine of them are absolutely essential. They are like vitamins. You need them every day. Well, it turns out there are three really good proteins that have all the essential and non-essential amino acids, and that is egg white, dairy protein, and of course, soy protein, which we found in one of the chests on our desert island. So shown on this slide is all the different qualities of protein. As you go toward the right side of the slide, you'll notice that many of the so-called vegetarian or vegan proteins like quinoa, flax, sesame, and rice protein have a, a mixture of amino acids that doesn't quite meet what you find in soy, but you can combine them in the right proportions and approach soy. But what I like to say about soy, it's the most complete protein in the plant world. So soy protein is something that can enhance any vegan or vegetarian diet. Soy protein is also better for the planet. Let's not forget, it's better for you and better for the planet than milk from cows. Less carbon dioxide is produced by planting soybeans, by planting all this feed for the cows, then feeding it to the cows, and then the cows release methane into the air. So you have a much more complex situation. So take soy protein, both for meals, and also if you're a vegetarian or vegan, take some soy protein powder and add it into that vegetarian meal. As you can see, protein is truly the building block of the body and it's how you start to build out your diet every day. So if you're stuck on a desert island, well, you take that soy protein and that's the base of your diet, add a little dollop of olive oil, have some cassava fruit for taste and you could survive long enough till that boat gets there to rescue you off that island. Or on the other hand, you just might not wanna get shipwrecked in the first place. Herbalife Nutrition, better for you and better for the planet.